Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be an episode on a potential pretty, uh, for a fairly large storm system. <clears throat> and this one will be bringing heavy downpour, rain, uh, wind, you know, some severe weather. It's going to be more of a fall storm, more of a winter storm, however. Uh, we'll just, uh, I'll explain everything <clears throat> in this video. Before we do get into this video, I would recommend, uh, you guys, obviously I would recommend, but I would highly, uh, you know, consider for you guys to subscribe to this channel. <clears throat> consider liking this video, helps this channel grow. If you like any of this content, remember to leave a nice comment, that also helps out. Um, so, thank you for that. <clears throat> uh, let's get right into it. So, this is right now the GFS model, Global Forecasting System on TropicalTidbits.com. <clears throat> and what are we looking at right now? So, <clears throat> basically what we're looking at is uh, the MSLP and precipitation rate. And this is basically showing us... <clears throat> a giant storm system you can see right there a big low pressure it's starting it's already on land it's starting to take shape as of right now <clears throat> in uh in southwestern canada and this is actually prompting flash flood watches and severe thunderstorm watches across the <clears throat> kansas area <clears throat> you can see that this uh is actually yeah you can see it's showing quite an area of uh, not many uh, severe weather warnings yet, but there's a whole area of, uh, this is actually a tornado watch, apologize about that. You can see there's actually quite a bit of precip with that, and it's not even fully developed, it's kind of like, uh, up here, the system, <clears throat> and you can see the precip going down right here, so you can see the storm is strong, it has such a wide reach, and if we play this into motion, hour 12, you can see that's where it intensifies, <clears throat> and this really starts taking shape in the Rockies, in the front range of the Rockies, in Wyoming, southern Montana, and soon, soon this, uh, kind of erupts into a whole new, this one gives way to another one, uh, that feeds off its energy, <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, this really takes advantage of the Gulf of Mexico moisture. Notice how it starts streaming to the north. All of this very heavy rain, tropical downpours possibly across much of the Midwest, <clears throat> almost in a cold uh, front style. And you can see that um, right there, very strong system. All low pressures <clears throat> spin uh, counterclockwise. So it's sorry about that. Uh, it's sitting, <clears throat> it's sitting right here, and the winds around it are spinning <clears throat> counterclockwise. And uh, this is allowing for <clears throat> quite quite a, a expansive area of precip to form. <clears throat> and you know what? What's the thing that's the thing that's even uh, further emphasizing or exaggerating this uh, low pressure events? As you can see, <clears throat> uh, here we have a low pressure, and it's dragging a lot of uh, wind and a cooler air behind it from here. And this is kind of converting. Uh, forming this convergence boundary right here and because this high pressure right here you could see is spinning clockwise and it's kind of bringing the winds almost in the opposite from the exact opposite direction with the low pressure is and it's almost creating like a highway of precip and this is always where strong winds severe weather <clears throat> and the storms just really love to form along these lines and you can see that just explodes and look at that that's a very strong system 988 that's uh typically um you know a fall or winter storm that's a you know good good uh, magnitude <clears throat> and that definitely brings its fair share maybe not towards the northeast as much but definitely for the midwest and and for the northern plains and notice how afterwards we see this high pressure and I could tell there's gonna be cool weather behind us many that you no know, tropical tidbits and watching like to watch weather maps could know that the, these type of lines mean cooler air if you don't see this then let me go to the two meter temperature anomaly and you can see it is very cool some of the I mean, look at see right there that's a cold front this is during the night <clears throat> so it's not as amplified the cold air but then during the day it really stands out look at that very chilly possibly some anomalies being 12 to 20 degrees below average <clears throat> and this really uh, this really, uh, you know, stays along for quite a while before another reinforcing shot. You can see very chilly across Nebraska, Iowa, <clears throat> bringing chilly conditions. And it, again, it stays on for quite a while. The west may be still staying a little bit warm. Then the cooler air starts breaking up. And we can actually see uh, warmer temperatures, which would be nice. We've been seeing some cooler temperatures for the last couple of days. But, uh, you know, that's not set in stone because some models are showing still the cool air. Some models like the GFS is showing a little bit of warmer air. <clears throat> but definitely through around September uh, 1st, 2nd, like that beginning of that week, it should be rather chilly. Now, let's look at the precipitation amount. Sorry about uh, my uh, weird maybe talking uh, 
these weird pauses. I am suffering from a sore throat, so that is a little bit <coughs> causing a, a, a inconvenience in terms of my speaking. <coughs> and let's look at the, I want to show you the total accumulated precipitation. And let's look at this. <coughs> And uh, let's take a look at this. You can see that uh, there's actually, uh, you can see right there. Sorry about that. I was getting something loading here. So uh, right in this area where the flash flood watches and the thunderstorm watches are, are two plus inches of rain in a hot spot. <clears throat> but that's uh, right around central Kansas. Most of Kansas, though, should get around at least half an inch of rain. <clears throat> and uh, not all will get rain, but especially towards the center of the country. Uh, of the <laughs> of the state you'll see more rain and look at that again very strong system dumping quite a bit of rain <clears throat> but again this is very hard to predict exactly where the heaviest rain will fall because these thunderstorms you know could set up right here right here possibly right here maybe right here and it depends on depending on where they set up <clears throat> we'll get these little bands of heavier precip here and that will really alter you from seeing possibly you know maybe not even half an inch to over two inches of rain in terms of the long range, if we were to go even further, <coughs> uh, we could see uh, a really actually rainy and active pattern, <coughs> and uh, maybe not for the northeast. You could see that the northeast may be uh, excluded out of this. The northeast may be a little bit uh, drier. However, southeast pretty what, <laughs> pretty wet, and the north pretty wet, and the south southern Canada pretty wet <coughs> for extreme. <clears throat> southern Canada pretty wet and then uh, again where that system kind of takes you know its exact shape and you can see the precip uh, from that previous storm stays there let's look at the European model in terms of <clears throat> the temperatures let's see what it's forecasting and in terms of the storm you can see it in that long range is forecasting a high range of pressure and that's generally what the models are agreeing on uh, next week not this upcoming week but next week it looks as if to be warmer <clears throat> you can see here's a cool down and that's one day friday but then starting saturday tuesday you can see almost a ridging pattern develops and that could bring some warmer temperatures for much of the country allowing for uh above average conditions Possibly some heat advisories to form, <clears throat> especially towards uh, the south, south where the <clears throat> where the averages are still pretty high. Towards the north, the averages are already dropping. Uh, here in Chicago, we are seeing around uh, I think the average is right now 81 degrees, and at its peak it was 85. So it's already starting to cool down. The days are starting to get shorter. Uh, let's look at the GEFS ensembles <clears throat> for <clears throat> uh, for one two. Look at the long range. Okay, so uh, they're also showing more of a ridging pattern, but nothing, you know, too uh, too warm. They're showing more of a moderate moderating pattern, though. So we'll have to see about that. In terms of the National Weather Service for Central Kansas, not showing uh, much for uh, for. Uh, for the precip yet across the country because it's still several days out but you can see it's showing the severe weather and flash flood watches greatest flooding risk area again towards the central part of the kansas and you can see plus two three maybe even four inches of rain to be occurring and uh, <clears throat> with these severe thorn storms you can see uh, large hail damaging winds that's what always happens when those two like i demonstrated with that high pressure and that low pressure it's kind of like a highway for the storms they always get really powerful really strong especially when it's uh, naturally already warm like here it is august 24th uh wichita kansas pretty uh, you know the average is probably somewhere around 86 87 85 in that ballpark and when we get <clears throat> you know a, a big storm like this to tap into the energy or we could see um some you know potential uh, very very powerful systems <clears throat> so uh if you were to look at the what else can i show you? i could also show you the temperature uh just a two meter temperature shade and show you that temperature contrast that will occur after the storm so let's go back to our zero here and let's let me show you this <clears throat> so here we are in that first cool off uh and then now uh, actually, let's go back. So this is where we are. <clears throat> this is where we were. We were in that cool off. This was Thursday, Friday. This was this is today, Saturday, and uh, we see <clears throat> this cooling air mass because of this low pressure that is taking away from that from that uh, that warmth and it's, uh, bringing cloud cover, which is inducing uh, more 
uh, cooler temperatures and tapping in some big storms but you can see it tries making its way the warm air up but un unfortunately fortunately you can see that the cooler air behind it rushes in look at that 40s 50s during the nighttime low so very very chilly and with these nighttime lows you could see some of them are getting down into almost the upper 30s across here in parts of <clears throat> southern canada this is i think uh, manitoba i'm not too sure that's i think that's alberta that's yeah that's manitoba right there and uh, that is uh, you know some pretty chilly temperatures and this is only 90 hours out so it's most likely going to occur as it's fairly uh accurate 90 hours out the gfs but then obviously towards the end <clears throat> it gets a little bit wacky we could start seeing you know 30s way further south but it's a long range so it, might, it may not be that accurate but you can see they're showing at some signs of heat which would bring some very very mild temperatures possibly for september so we'll have to keep an eye on that but uh, thank you guys so much for watching consider liking the video consider subscribing to the channel and i'll catch you all guys in the next episode see ya